Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and share some of our recent work on dialogue. Okay, when we're talking about dialogue tasks, there are two important axes to consider. The first is grounded, meaning how much of the conversation is talking about a particular word. And the second is open-endedness, meaning how diverse the content is. What, what kind of things can you talk about in the conversation? So on one hand, we have the traditional task-oriented dialogue, such as flight booking or restaurant reservation. So these conversations often involve lots of database query. And currently, the dialogue follows the pattern of user asking lots of questions to query information, or system ask user questions to fill in a form, for example, when booking the flight ticket. So these tasks are grounded, but they're often very narrow domain. And on the other hand, we also have the chit chat dialogue, where we can pretty much talk about everything. And this allows us to scrape large amounts of data from Twitter or Reddit. But if you think about it, much of human conversation actually happens in between these two modes. We rarely have a conversation without any purpose. And in our guaranteed conversation, not all utterances are directly related to um, the goal. So what are some desired features when, if we want to build systems in between those two modes? And here's the example. So today, if the user says, it's so cold today, can you order delivery for me? Our bot immediately knows that the intent is to order food, and it can respond something like, what would you like to order? This is all fine, but imagine the bot can actually has access to some knowledge represented either as a structured database or unstructured text retrieved from the web. Now it might do some simple reasoning and figure out, oh, because it's cold, the user might want some hot and comfort food. So it will be able to suggest, would you like some beef stew? And now this is a much more efficient um, response to achieve the user's goal of order delivery. And here is another example. Here the bot wants to remind the user to do some exercise. If the user says, I'm really tired, today the bot can only keep reminding the user to do exercise until it is stopped, because that's the only thing relevant to the goal. Now, if you want to get the user to move, it's actually more effective to include some chit chat here. For example, the bot can say, how about enjoying the sunset while jogging? So this is more effective. So in both cases, we want systems that can handle both grounding and open-ended generation. And that's going to be the topic of the talk today. So I will talk about uh, two recent work along these lines. The first is how can we do simple reasoning over knowledge graphs in a collaborative dialogue task? And the second is how can we handle both strategy learning and open-ended generation in negotiation dialogue? Um, the first is the joint work with Anusha, who has just talked, and Michal, and also Percy at Stanford. So here is the collaborative dialogue setting. Uh, we have two agents. Each of them have some private knowledge. And they're going to chat with each other to exchange information in the knowledge base to perform some tasks together. So this is a very broad setting. If you think about the knowledge base as the user's favorite uh, food and the local restaurant information, this will be a restaurant booking um, conversation. But in our case, we have a more symmetric game-like setting. And we designed this mutual friend game uh, where the database is a table of friend information. And these are private information. So the task is to talk with each other within five minutes to figure out the mutual friend. And here's the example dialogue. Now A starts with, hi, most of my friends work for Google. And B replies, do you have any friend who went to Stanford? Uh, I have Jessica in front of mine and Josh both went to Stanford. Uh, or anyone working at Apple, so I notice this is a crosstalk. It's not directly uh, responding to the previous utterance. And at this point, once they figure out the friend, the, the mutual friend, they can just select that friend. And when they select the two rows with the same attributes, the task is completed. So how do we build a bot that can play this game with a person? We want a model that can take both the structured knowledge base and the unstructured dialogue history to generate the next utterance. 
and the intuition here is to combine these two types of knowledge, and also we want to dynamically update our representation as we take information from the partner. So I'm going to go through the model uh, really quickly. Here our input is a simple table and the dialogue context. Um, the standard way to uh, do this uh, chit chat type dialogue is the sequence to sequence model. So we encode all the dialogue history into a vector and then decode the response from it. But here the new challenge is that we want to incorporate a knowledge base into this model. So what we did is to embed the knowledge base such that we have a vector representation for each entities in this table. And the vector representation will incorporate uh, information related to that entity in the dialogue uh, history. Once we have a representation for each entity in the table, at generation time, we can simply condition on those entities to perform some soft lookup into this embedded knowledge base. Okay, let's first look at how do we embed this uh, table. We start with the graph representation of the table. Uh, so you can see here the item one or node one has name Jessica uh, went to Stanford and works at Google, so this represents one row. Um, and now we want to compute a vector representation for each node in this graph. If you consider this graph as a memory network, now each node is basically a memory slot that we want to save related, um, information related to that particular entity. Now we have this input utterance, anyone went to Stanford, which is related to node Stanford. So we do something like message passing. We take this utterance embedding, send that to the node Stanford, and the node pass this message on to neighbor nodes and so on and so forth. So once all uh, representation, all node representation is updated with this new piece of information, uh, we get a list of uh, node representations or entity representations. Then during generation, we simply do uh, the standard attention plus copy mechanism. Attention tells us which part of the graph we should focus on when generating the utterance, and copy allows us to generate the entity name represented by a particular node. Okay. Um, all right, at a high level, here we use the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model to encode the unstructured context from the dialogue history and we encode, uh, we combine it with the structure knowledge through this graph embedding. Let's look at an example dialogue between this model and a real human. So uh, at the top, I'm showing the two uh, table of friends of the two agents. And the human starts with, all of my friends prefer morning, and the bot says, one of my morning likes the indoors, and all like indoor except one. Uh, do they work for TRT Holdings, Kessley? And then they were able to um, get the correct friend. So in this case, we see that the bot is able to follow up with whatever information the, the human is given, and they were able to quickly reduce the search space to arrive at the correct answer. Um, and we also did some human evaluation. So we deployed the bot and have humans to chat with the bot to do some A-B testing. And we evaluate the bot in the following aspects. We ask the user how fluent is their partner, how uh, cooperative is their partner, and also how human-like is their partner. Oh, I haven't talked about, about the baseline. So we compare our system with the Rubis bot and StanoNet, which is an ablation of our model. So in the StanoNet, uh, there's no message passing. The graph rep representation is fixed from the beginning. Um, and also the red bar is the human performance. So in all aspects, uh, we're performing better than the baselines. Okay, in the second part, uh, I will talk about how do we decouple strategy learning in uh, strategy learning and open-ended generation in negotiation dialogue. And this is, uh, again, work done at Stanford, joined with uh, Derek, Anusha, and Percy. So the negotiation dialogue setting is similar to the mutual friend. So again, we have two agents, each of them have some private knowledge, and they're trying to chat with each other to uh, perform a task. But in, even in the mutual friend, it's not completely open domain. The main complexity comes from reasoning through uh, this knowledge graph, uh, but the sentences are quite simple. So here we're really trying to push the open-endedness of the dialogue and include more diversity in the conversation. 
So we ground our dialogue in cracklist posts, uh, which has lots of real world entities. Um, here is how we collect the data set. So we ask users um, in Connect Turk to do this role playing. So one agent plays the role of a seller, the other is a buyer. And then we show them this, um, this ad scraped from Cracklist. So you can see someone is trying to rent this apartment and there are detailed descriptions of the, the item. Um, and after they chat with each other to agree on a price, they can submit the, the final deal here, um, or they can also quit any time in between. Here is the example um, dialogue we collected. Here, um, the item for sale is a secondhand TV, a 10, a 10 years old TV. Um, and we also show both of them the listing price of this item, and we give the buyer a target price to achieve to encourage hard negotiation. And in this example dialogue, we can see they start by greeting each other, and then um, the buyer starts to inquire about the object, like what condition is it, and it scratches, and so on. And in particular, they also mention details uh, in, the, um, in the post, like it recently got repaired, or I just installed a new lamp. And then when they're trying to propose prices, they will include arguments for why they want that price, like the TV is too old, so I think 275 is a little high. And um, they're also trying to negotiate side, deal, uh, side offers, like I would deliver it to you for free. So what we see here is a very rich set of um, conversational phenomena in negotiation. However, even though it's open-ended, it still has a goal here. This allows us to label um, these utterances with some simple intents. For example, greeting, proposing price, and counter price, and so on and so forth. So this allows us to separate strategy learning from the open-ended generation. So here we follow the task-oriented, uh, fr the modular frameworks that Sona has uh, introduced at the beginning. So we start with um, a input utterance. I would like to pay 125 for it. How does that sound? Then we parse that into a simple logical form, or the dialogue act. And next, given the parse dialogue acts, the dialogue manager will generate the next system action. This system action specifies the intent of the output utterance, or the strategic part of the, the response. But what about the open-ended part? To handle the open-ended part, we have the generator condition on both the previous utterance and the system action. So the previous utterance will provide context for the open-ended parts we want to fill in. Um, then given the next user response, we can just repeat the same procedure, we parse it, and the manager generates the next action, and the generator gives the response, and so on and so forth. So the representation in the dialogue act space allows us to separate the manager from the language generation. So now the dialogue strategy is completely contained in this dialogue act space, and then we can uh, learn different strategies through supervised learning, reinforcement learning, or even domain-specific spe knowledge, like some rules. Um, and we can keep the language generation part intact. So one problem in end-to-end -end dialogue systems is that once you start to optimize the system with some reward function, the utterance becomes unnatural or ungrammatical because the ob objective or the reward function only says uh, you should arrive at a good deal, but it doesn't say the utterance has to be grammatical. Um, for example, here we have this model, sick to sick model trained in the word space, and we do reinforcement learning on top of that. Um, and the goal here is to maximize the dialogue length. So the longer the conversation, the better. So here we see that the bot learned some ungrammatical phrases, like it's in good condition, condition. And the way it's making the conversation longer is through repeating some utterances, like, okay, that sounds good. Now, if you look at the model that learned in the dialogue act space using the modular framework, the dialogue is much more reasonable. So the bot uh, makes the dialogues longer by asking lots of questions about the item, and also by insisting on a particular price. Okay, next for um, human evaluation, and we did uh, similar things as in the mutual friend 
project, we deploy the bot on uh, Amazon Mechanic Turk and have Turkers talk with that in A-B testing setting. Um, here we compare uh, reinforcement learning in the word space and reinforcement learning in the action space. Um, we have three reward functions, the utility, the fairness, uh, the utility and fairness of the deal and also length of the conversation. So specific definition is not that important. Um, the key thing here is that in terms of optimizing the objective, both models did pretty well. But if you ask the user whether the bot has shown reasonable negotiation behavior or the human likeness, we see that models optimized in the word space uh, has really low score, but models um, optimized in the action space is able to maintain the naturalness of the uh, utterance. So the takeaway is that uh, by separating uh, strategy learning and language generation, we were able to avoid de degeneracy during optimization. Okay, um, at the summary, so I've talked about our work towards um, building more open-ended task-oriented system, and I introduced this uh, two dialogue task mutual friends and crack list bargain. So I think uh, one key lesson we learned through these dialogues is that um, for problems like text generation or dialogue, we're given one input. There are lots of possible correct outputs. It's really important to include structure to encode our prior on the generative process, and that makes our model more robust. Um, and finally, all the code and data uh, can be found on this link. Um, and thank you. If there are any questions.